Hello again. Welcome back. And yes, we have another fret work video. This one's a bit different, so we had to include it. This time around we have a Kramer guitar that I like to refer to as one of the early heavy metal guitars because, well, <laughs> they've got the aluminum neck. These guitars were built in the late mid 70s and the aluminum necks were given up in the mid 80s but they were designed uh, by second generation aluminum neck builders uh, Mr. Kramer and Phil Patillo uh, in the New Jersey area had come up with this version of the neck and what we have is an extruded aluminum neck T-section with wood on the sides to give it a wooden feel which felt entirely different than the Travis Bean guitars that were all aluminum that Mr. Kramer had uh, been a former partner of. This is a heavy guitar. Uh, it probably weighs in at probably about 12 pounds-ish. Uh, it's enough to make the 70s and early 80s Les Pauls stand up and take notice. Beginning in some details here we actually have an ebon all fingerboard which again was one of the first synthetic fingerboard materials. Seems that we have a couple cracks here and there in it. I've never uh, seen ebon all crack before. We have a zero fret. We have an aluminum nut that's, I don't know if you can see or not, there's a indexing pin right here. Of course, like I say, we've got this aluminum neck. There is also no truss rod, which brings us to one of the problems we've got. We have about a 64th of an inch bow, actually I measured 18 thousandths bow in this neck. So that's going to be a challenge too. We're going to have to pull out some uh, tricks out of our magic bag to get this taken care of. But looking the guitar over, um, it's had a pick card made for it. We've got some other issues. We actually have a crack here that has come back into as far as here. And not only has it cracked, but it's separating and twisting. So that's going to have to be dealt with too. You can see the neck's not even sitting flat on the body because of it. I've seen a few of these before. In fact, uh, an old bass player friend of mine from the late 70s had one of the basses. So like I say, this is going to be a little challenging here and there. Uh, it's got to be fun. But like I say, we don't get the easy ones in here. So I'm going to start tearing this apart and get into it. Hang tight. Okay, we're only about 20 minutes into this. I've managed to get the nut off, but this pen is going to be nasty. I've got the first fret out and found something here interesting. The fret slots are about 27 thousandths wide. The tang in the fret was 19. That does not make for a very stiff neck. Of course, you know, who would have thought that you'd need a stiffer neck with aluminum for a substructure? But anyway, moving on, we're going to get the rest of these frets out. Okay, well, we're about 45 minutes in here. It didn't take long to get the frets out. Got them right there. <laughs> I'm leaving the zero fret until I get this neck jigged up on a neck jig. I said, I've got the frets out. More importantly, I got that pin out. That pin was a nasty bit of work. So we've got it in the nut right here. I have found out that the neck was actually straighter than the frets. The neck actually has about a 12,000 bow in it at this point. 
but we're going to jig it up see what it has a string tension and all that. The fingerboard has a 12 inch radius so that's going to be easy to deal with. The frets are regular jumbos. They're originally about 46 thousandths tall, about 106 thousandths wide, but they were worn down to below 30 thousandths in some places, especially in the middle of the neck. Like I say, around the G and D where it been a lot of uh, bending done over the years. The zero fret is much smaller. It is actually about 85 thousandths wide and 55 thousandths tall. So we take that in consideration. Uh, we want it to be about 10 thousandths higher than the first fret. So we'll see what happens there. Okay, we're going to move this over the neck jig. Well, we're about an hour and a half in at this point, and I'm actually getting some of my preliminary leveling done here. You can see these are still high spots. Still got a pretty good dip right here. We got to get out. Sanding this ebonol reminds me a lot of the uh, <laughs> construction paper fiberglass resin bobbins I used to make for pickups years ago. Same consistency. I wonder. <laughs> anyway, got quite a little mess going on here. Got my various sanding blocks I'm using. Making a lot of dust, running the shop vac a lot. This uh, isn't coming off really easy, but we're making progress. Okay, so it's been a couple hours here. The fingerboard has been perfectly leveled and radius properly. Where the cracks were in the fingerboard here, they've actually come out pretty well where I glued them. So we're all cleaned up here for the evening. And I'm going to walk away for the night. So we've got a couple hours in here so far. Uh, we're all ready to clean the fret slots out and chamfer them and start fitting frets. But that's going to be for tomorrow. Okay, so we found another issue. I pulled the neck off here to get it ready to start working on and check this body thing out. Of course, you can see how bad this crack is right here. You can pick it up here. See how it's spread out. You can see how the neck pocket is not flat. Anyway, they've epoxied a piece of drywall screen here and here on the neck. So we're going to clean that up. Oh well. All right. Well, we have all of our frets in. They've been rough leveled, trimmed, and the sides of them buffed. I even took a couple nicks out of the aluminum over here, along the edge of the fingerboard where it had been bumped pretty hard at some point, and buffed those out. So we're ready to go back on the neck jig. So we're going to put it back on the body here and get our fret dress done. As it turns out, the epoxy that was done in here was run out from where someone had patched this crack a little bit back here. So that cleaned all this up and I got it taken care of. Uh, what I found uh, it's very difficult to clamp this area right here because you can't get to it. I actually found a clamp that I had made to use in my neck jig for another purpose entirely. Works really well for this. So we're going to use that to clamp that with. I've also made a little wedge here that fits the crack. Uh, I had it clamped together where the back side came back together because the back side will meet, but there's no way you can pull the top there together. So what I'm going to do is get this ready to glue up. I'm going to fill it full of glue. I'm going to start clamping it. And when the back 
I'm going to pull the back of the crack together. I'm going to back my clamp off just a tiny little bit and slide this wedge down in and then reclamp it. I've even sealed and used a little bit of amber touch up pen to kind of disguise this wedge a little bit. It's still going to show, but it won't stick out like a sore thumb. So, let's get this rolling. Yeah, well there we go. Got it all clamped up. Let's see how this works out. So we're using, you know, like eight hour epoxy, so let's see what happens. We'll check it tomorrow. Okay, that worked out. That took a few minutes to straighten out. We actually have it all level now. We've got to do some touch-ups around it. But uh, all that shimming and everything worked out really well. I leveled up the cavity, the neck pocket here, uh, using the fret rocker as a straight edge in here to check things. Uh, used sanding stick, sanding block, and one of my secret tools is I make these little scrapers out of glass. You just use a glass cutter and straight edge and make these custom little scrapers for whatever size you need. And, yeah, they're disposable. So anyway, let's get on to touching this up and get this neck back on this. Alright, well we've got all of our touch up done and rubbed out. We've got our holes cleaned back out. This doesn't look too bad considering. Yeah, it's not invisible, it's not perfect, but hey, it's solid and we've got a flat spot to mount the neck back on. So let's get the neck back on this and get moving on. We have our fret dress finished now. Meantime, we're waiting for our epoxy to set here for our zero fret. We've kind of cleaned things up here a little bit. So we have to get this last fret, the ends of it trimmed and cleaned up. We have to get our aluminum nut back on. I think we're over the tuning machines and all that, make sure they're good. Tight everything there. We're going to be ready to put this back together. Well, while I'm at it here, the wiring is an absolute mess. He said his tone control didn't work. Uh, it looks to me like the tone control capacitor is actually a too small value. Uh, we'll put a lock washer underneath the jack and clean up the wiring here. Take a good look at this switch. That's a accident waiting to happen. So we're going to get a lock washer on it too and get it tightened up because it's actually flopping around. Alright, here we go. Well, great. <laughs> While I'm cleaning up the wiring on this, which you can see is not finished yet, I was checking things out here. This front pickup is open. And you probably can't tell from this view but it is epoxy encapsulated in this metal cover. So I talked to the owner, he's going to leave it unhooked for the time being. He's going to send it off to one of his friends to have them make a new pickup to put in it. So we're going to walk away from that. So I'm going to finish up the wiring and get this guitar together. Well, we've run into something else. Basically the neck pocket here is so sloppy, even with new bolts back there for the mounting for the neck, that could snug up better. The heads were stripped out on the old ones. They were pretty ragged. 
this neck flops pretty bad from side to side. In fact, give me a second here. I need both hands for this. We can pull the neck over that much. Not good. Or we can go the other way. And be off that much. So what I'm going to have to do is shim this neck pocket up. I'm actually going to have to glue wooden shims in each side of the pocket to try to tighten up the bottom of it a little bit. There's no support on the sides. So this is going to be a little touchy. But after all the fret work and everything else with this guitar, there's no way I'm going to send it out here with the neck floating around on it. Well, well, well. <laughs> Lo and behold, may miracles never cease. I have this guitar finished. Took just a bit over nine hours. We've got it all back together, got the neck solid on it. Strings are lined up great on the neck. You can see my shim I had to put in down here. Actually, I had to shim one side. The other side fit up pretty well and that aligned the neck properly. So let's recap here a little bit. We had to level up a bowed fingerboard and do a refret, do a zero fret, take a nut out that was pinned and epoxied, okay then if you remember the body back here was cracked, so we had to fix that. He now has new mounting bolts back here because the threads on them were all messed up, plus the heads were stripped out badly. Had to clean up his wiring. He still has the bad front pickup. Uh, He's going to have someone else take care of that. My days of dealing with epoxy potted things are over. I just don't have the time for it. But we've got it playing. Plays great. Heavy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I am not sorry to see this one go. This has been a job. Had to struggle with a lot of things here to get this straightened out. This is another case of 80s guitars. Everybody was having bad stuff put out in the 80s. A lot of sloppy neck joints. Everybody talks about the New Orleans years with Gibson, but man, everybody had problems. So anyway, we're getting this ready to go out the door. So, spoiler alert, this is actually going to be a two-part Kramer selection because before I had this one finished, another one come in. So, till next time, play nice. I'll see you later.